Hi, Code Monkey here. A couple of days ago, I received an email from a fellow developer named Jeff who is having a little problem in his game with some keyboard controls. And he asked me, would I look at the problem, see if I could find a solution, and if I could, then make a video to show him how it worked. Well, and that's what I've done. If you've got a similar request, just leave a note below or contact me at williamclarkson.net or phasergames.com. In the meantime, let's get started. Code Monkey, get up, get coffee. Code Monkey, go to job. Now, here's the link that I received from Jeff, and he's got some nice animations on his character here. And I'm sure this is all mostly just test things that he's using. But here is the problem. When he pushes the left and right keys at the same time, it just bounces back and forth. And my solution to this is to use locks. Lock the player out of any action you don't want him doing until what you're doing in the code is complete. Let's have a look here. I've set up a simple sprite here on the stage, simple Munster sprite, and preloaded it and scaled it and centered it using the utility template. So let's add some keyboard controls to it. And there are several ways to do it. I'll do it the way that Jeff was doing it. And that was to create a keyboard object. This keyboard equals this input keyboard add keys. And then in a string delimited by commas, W, A, S, and D. All one string with commas in it. And then down in the update to detect that key, if this keyboard D is down, and Phaser just creates a D object in there when you put that in the string there, the add keys. And if it is down and that equals true, then we can say then this monster X plus plus. There. Now let's do the same for the S. If this keyboard S is down equals true, then monster X minus minus. And let's see if I get the same problem. Yes, if I push both keys at the same time, then the monster just stands still because it's adding one and taking one away. So it's saying is down equals true. And if S down equals true, and it adds one and takes one away so it stays in place. Well, we can fix this by locking the player out until we're ready for them to do something else. In other words, don't let them push two keys at the same time. I'm going to create a variable up here at the top of create, this key lock. And I'm going to say it equals false. And then we can check if the key is down and this key lock is false. Then we set this key lock equals true inside of that condition. So as soon as they push D is down, the key lock equals true, and then they're locked out. Let's go ahead and add that to the S key down here as well. Now, of course, as soon as we push a key, we're locked out of pushing any others. So we have to turn the key lock to false somewhere again. So we'll make a function here called unlock this key lock equals false. And then we can set a listener on the keyboard. And that is found in input of the scene, this input keyboard on key up. This unlock and we'll bind it to the scene. Bind this. And I'll go ahead and log out in here just to make sure we're in there. Console log unlock. I forgot that this key lock equals true. Down here in the S. So if I push it down, it goes one space and then locks. Let me change that a little bit so you can see it better. And we'll say x plus equals 10 and x minus equals 10. So I push the D key, it locks, and then I have to keep pushing the key to do that. So that's not going to work over here in this example because it goes until the key is down. Well, what we can do instead of having that this monster X plus equals here inside this loop, we can set up a direction. 
this exter equals zero, and this monster, outside of all those if statements here in the update, this monster x plus equals this exter. And we'll set exter here. This exter equals negative 10 inside the S key condition. And copy and paste this here and change that to a positive 10. And when the key goes up, this exter equals 0. Now, if I push both keys at the same time, whichever key I push first, We'll keep going. So it locks that out effectively. I can't push two keys at the same time. Now, Jeff is using tweens here. So if you're using tweens, what you want to do is set a lister on that tween to unlock the condition. So in other words, on tween complete, then you would call the unlock function there. You can also use this with click events. I use it all the time, a click lock, to be able to stop the player from pushing all the buttons or all the gems, all the whatever it is, all at once until I have the program complete what I want it to do. Well, I hope that's helpful for you. And Jeff, I hope this uh, helps solve your problems. If anybody else has any other requests, please leave a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks very much.